Okay. Well, while we wait for Jason to retrieve his coffee, uh, let's play a game. No, he's already back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another week of uh, Thoughts and Prayer with Jason and Zach. And uh, we're, we're glad that you're here with us. I will start out this week with a short little devotion um, that I've entitled Everybody's a Critic. And so I want to <laughs> I want to read uh, um, a couple of scriptures, but uh, one of them I want to uh, take out of the ninth chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles. And so just so you're aware of what's going on in this story here before I get to it, um, Saul, who becomes Paul, so he's still being referred to as Saul in this particular passage, uh, comes to the Lord uh, through a miraculous vision that, that Christ gives him. And of course, he loses his sight temporarily and um, uh, the Lord speaks to him and Saul is converted. He's on his way when this happens to uh, um, to get some more Christians and, and persecute them, to arrest them. He's gotten permission uh, from the high priest to do this. And so he's on the Damascus Road and he has this vision from Christ and it turns his life around. Um, and so he ends up getting baptized by Ananias and um, becomes a different person. Uh, but in this passage right here that we're going to read, Saul has now come to Jerusalem, but the Christians there are having also their concerns, which we all would have, I think, um, with whether or not to accept him, because they knew that because of him, people had died. Because of him, people had been arrested, tortured, families uh, been broken up, and so uh, they didn't know exactly what to think about this. But we have a little passage here um, that I'm going to read, starting in the 26th verse. And this is what it says. It says, When Saul had come to Jerusalem... He tried to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the way and that he had spoken to him and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. He was with them entering into Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. So as you can see there, uh, Barnabas was a central figure in the story of Paul. Now, we, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever heard that preached on. Uh, I'm sure it has been uh, over the centuries. Well, but I don't think I've personally ever heard that preached on just how the central figure or the link that Barnabas himself was uh, to Paul and moving forward in his ministry and his reconciliation with the church after he had persecuted them. Now, uh, to kind of switch gears and to, to get to where I'm going with this message, um, I want us to understand a little bit about our nature, uh, our human nature, which we still have even in the church, even though we should be willing to sacrifice that and give it up and we should be different. Most of the time, and this, especially in this day and age, although the church has always struggled with this because we're humans and many times we choose our own nature over the nature of Christ, but most of the time we have problems. We like to criticize others. We don't like to forgive we like to hold things over people's head. Again, we just like to plain criticize. And this is a problem that's in the church even to this day. And we could go down through a list of examples, and this would really fit almost any church in America or probably even really all around the world. What are some of the things we criticize? Well, maybe the preacher didn't do the service right, or we didn't like what he had to say. Maybe one of the elders didn't shake my hand uh, when I was leaving the sanctuary because they had something else on their mind and they missed it. Um, the youth pastor should be spending 100% of his week with the youth, another 100% of his week uh, studying the Bible, and another 100% of his week in his office available if we need him. And we really do think this way I'm a lot doing of times. All of that, by the way. Well, uh, the math doesn't quite add up there. <laughs> but we really do put this kind of pressure on people in the church, whether it be in leadership or in other things, that's unrealistic. And then it's easy for us to consistently and constantly tear each other down because they're not meeting what our expectations might be for them and we don't even stop to think of where they might be on their walk or how we could potentially be like Barnabas if there is an issue and maybe help to bring some sort of reconciliation. And basically the problem is, and this is something that I've preached on a lot here lately um, prior to the, the Easter season coming, the problem is pride because what it is is we think that highly of ourselves that we think that it's always constantly okay for us, from our perspective, to look at others and say, hey, they're not meeting my standards, so I'm going to criticize. I'm going to say what I think 
because they're not up here where I am. Well, we have to understand something, that when we come to Christ, we need to recognize that we're all down here. We're all striving to be up here, but we need to recognize that we're all down here. And going back to the passage that I read, um, we need to ask ourselves a question there. Again, this is a, a passage that we don't hear too often talked about, but what if Barnabas had had the same type of attitude with the Apostle Paul that many of us in the church or most of us would have today. I mean, how many of us would look past the things that Saul had done and think, okay, we can trust this man. Um, not only trust him, but eventually we're going to send him out and he's going to be the apostle to the Gentiles, right? Um, and all of the stuff that, that the Apostle Paul ended up doing. How many of us would look at somebody that had failed so miserably, had hurt so many people, had had done all of these different things, and in our mindset today, with our cancel culture, even in the church, we would be like, no, get rid of them, send them out, we're absolutely done, I'm up here, they're down here, I don't care what they're saying right now. But Barnabas didn't do that, and we need to ask ourselves, what happened because of Barnabas's love for the Apostle Paul, when he was known as Saul? And what happened was, was that he was able to bring a restoration into the church, he was able to bring in an apostle that then went out and reached to the Gentiles. Maybe the better question we should be asking ourselves is, what would have happened, or what would the world look like today if Barnabas hadn't done that? Because what did the apostle Paul accomplish after he was welcomed into the church? What he accomplished was, for one, uh, much of our Christian theology uh, comes to him, because he wrote a third of the New Testament, and we turn to many of his letters uh, to get what we believe as Christians out of those letters, well, that wouldn't have happened because um, Saul would have never been welcomed in. Uh, where would Christianity, would Christianity have ever spread throughout Europe as it did if we didn't have this apostle that was specific to the Gentiles? That I mean, obviously there were, there were other powerful apostles, you know, we know that there were ones that went with Paul on his mission trips and they probably would have reached people also, but it's clear that Christ had a, plan specifically for Paul, and that be because of the plan that he used Paul for, many, many people were reached, and Christianity continued to spread, and it went on all of these different continents because of the faithfulness and the work of Paul. But what would have happened if the early church had not been able to look past their inability to not criticize someone, if Barnabas had not stepped in there? And with that being said, I know I'm going a little long for a... Um, for devotion, I want to read something specifically from the Apostle Paul, which again we have today because of Barnabas' faithfulness in helping to, to bring Paul into the church. And this comes out of Paul's letter to the Romans, or the Christians in Rome. And I'm going to read uh, chapter 12. Excuse me. Um, I think I wrote down the wrong thing here. Hold on one second. No, I'm just on the wrong page. I'm going to read out of chapter 12, and I'm going to read uh, verse 9. And this is what Paul said, and you got to remember this is being written by a guy that wasn't necessarily welcomed with open arms by the disciples at the very beginning, if it weren't for Barnabas. But Paul said, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil, cling to that which is good. In love of the brothers, be tenderly affectionate to one another. In honor, prefer one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, enduring in troubles, continuing steadfastly in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, and given to hospitality. Now isn't that interesting, coming from the man that, that they were having a hard time welcoming, uh, but he doesn't have any hard feelings here. In, in, in fact, he's trying to let us know that as Christians, we need to stop seeing ourselves up here. We need to get back down here on this level and start preferring one another and start being like Barnabas. If there's someone that, that's in our life that maybe we don't think they're doing something right, then this is our chance uh, to help guide that person in the right direction, not to just tear them down uh, behind their back. And that is probably the number one problem in the church in America today is we don't even have to worry about the devil or the world outside there because we're too busy tearing ourselves down. Uh, the devil can just sit back and relax and let us do the job for him because that's what we do. But instead, we need to be like 
Barnabas. We need to look for opportunities to bring restoration um, and to bring healing inside the body of Christ, to not see ourselves way up here. Because I want to say something else, and then I'll, and then I'll shut up. But the last thing I want to say about this is this. When Saul, Paul, first was converted, yes, it was a miraculous experience. Yes, he saw the Lord, he heard the Lord speak to him, and yes, that changed his heart. He was baptized, I believe he received the Holy Spirit. This would have changed him, but even still, we have to understand that Paul would have still been a baby in Christ at the beginning. We don't skip that stage. We continue to grow. Now, Paul might have been further ahead in the fact that he already knew the Old Testament like the back of his hand, so he would have that knowledge, but even still, he was a baby in Christ. He would have had to learn how to get over certain things including a problem that he obviously had with arrogance, okay? So, Paul wouldn't have been perfect when Barnabas welcomed him into the church with the disciples. Paul would have still had his issues, but instead of criticizing, Barnabas brought him to the disciples and helped to move him forward and to help uh, nurture what would become of Paul, which is the great apostle uh, that we know of and we love and we look back and we recite almost every Sunday today. So that's what we need to remember. That's what it's about. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came. He's the only one that really was up here that could look down on the rest of us and say, hey, you guys are done. And instead he lowered himself down here, the Bible says. And he said, I want to help you guys get up here. I want, I want to see a restoration. That should be our goal in all things is restoration. With that being said, Zach, if you'd like to go on with the... Yeah, and it would just... Just to go off of that, I think that um, we all can be like Barnabas and be that one person, you know, that, that changes everything for a person's life. And then in so doing can change a church or change a community. And so, no, excellent devotion. Very well said. Um, I, know, uh, I know in my own life, uh, my great-grandfather, Harry Strait, um, he he kind of did that for our family. He changed everything for our family, really, because before that, nobody had really come to Christ, and, and he came to Christ and has left a legacy since then. So I know that that one person, being Barnabas, can really Amen. make such a huge difference. Um, we want to pray today for a few different requests. Uh, we have a prayer request from uh, Pastor Jason for his good friend Steve Looker. Uh, do you want to explain what's going on there? I just got a text message a short while ago from his wife there in Florida on vacation. Uh, he was admitted to the hospital uh, with possible heart attack. And his oxygen was around 90 and chest pains and uh, pain radiating, I think, down his arm, I believe they said. So he's had heart attacks before, and they're pretty certain that that's what's going on. So I know she's pretty worried about him, so just keep him in, in that family in your prayer. And obviously, they're not even home right now. They're on vacation. Right. Uh, so... Uh, I'm sure that's very stressful for it's him be scary. as well. Um, also, we want to keep Pat House in prayer. Uh, she's got a lot of different health things going on. Uh, just keep her in prayer generally. Well, and um, I know she's... I, I did talk with her. I went to go visit her at the hospital. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're, um, you're good. I didn't really ask her if I had permission to go into too much detail with anything that she's dealing with, so I'm not going to uh, say anything on here. But um, I just know that she's... Uh, waiting for certain results and different things. So just just keep her in prayer. Uh, mainly, I know that anytime we're waiting for anything, there's anxiety and we, we worry about things. So just pray for her mind right now that, that the Lord will encourage her and be with her at this right. moment. Uh, I also received a request um, just to pray for uh, Katie. Uh, she's been having some health issues as well, so we just want to pray for her. And then also, um, Angel Currents has asked that we pray for her situation. She is... Uh, currently fostering uh, a couple children, um, and she asked that we pray for their behavior, um, and that we pray that they will eventually get to go back home, uh, and then also that she will be able to make the right decisions and in dealing with that situation. So we definitely want to pray for her as well. And definitely keep that in prayer. I, I don't know that situation, so I'm not speaking on that particular situation, but um, in my own life, I know that, that we fostered children. Uh, it brings in a, a whole new dimension to your life because many times um, these kids, well, there's a reason they're being fostered. Something has happened um, right. to those poor kids and, and they're dealing with that and with their mind where it's at at that young age. Sometimes they don't know how to deal with it. So 
uh, definitely be in prayer um, hard about that for them. So. Yes. Well, with that being said, let's let's go to the Lord. Father, right now, uh, we are incredibly humbled. Lord, we humble our hearts before your throne. And Father, just as, as Pastor Jason has said, uh, Lord, help us to put aside our pride, to, to lay it down at the foot of the cross. Father, I know that uh, that has been something that, that he has spoken to me and to my heart so often in the last few few months that that I need to to put down my pride and I need to to pick up your humility and be more like your son and to to come to the foot of the cross and lay all of those things there father right now I, I pray a special prayer for for Steve looker uh, I, I know that he has a heart for you and, and that he wants to see your kingdom further but, but I know he's dealing with, with heart, uh, some, some serious heart issues right now, and I just pray that you be with him, um, be with his wife. It's got to be terribly stressful as they were on vacation. They're not at home. Um, so just work that situation out. And Father, also pray uh, for Pat House. Um, I don't know all of what's going on there, but I just I, I know that, that you are in control and that, that you, you can heal her, Lord. And, and Father, also pray for... For Katie, as she's requested a prayer for her health, her health conditions, and whatever is going on there, Lord, we don't know exactly, but I just pray that you would be with her, um, help help her her parents, help her family to be with her during this time. And Father, also especially pray for for the situation that Angel is in uh, with fostering these kids. And um, Lord, I do pray that they would um, have good behavior, that they would obey what angel is telling them and i pray also that they they would be able to go home to go back to to their their home and, and i pray also for uh for angel herself that she can make good decisions the right decisions that that you'll just be in that situation more i know it has to be difficult at times but i pray that you would would bless her and lord help us as a church to be able to to be there for them um, when needed. Father, I also pray specifically for our church here in Minerva. Father, I, uh, you, you know my heart for this church. You know how much I love this church. You know, that I, you know that I grew up in this church. And Father, I pray that we as a church can, can also set aside our pride so that we may reach more for your kingdom. Lord, give us your Holy Spirit. Allow us to go out and, and do your work, your kingdom work. We pray this in Jesus' name. Father, we just want to, again, just come to you on behalf of Steve and Peggy. Lord, just, um, they're away from home. Um, I, I'm not even sure where they're at on that vacation, if they're more towards the beginning or the end, but I know that brings a whole other set of stress um, with dealing with this possible heart attack. Um just because you've got the expenses of being there and everything of that nature. So, Lord, I just pray that you would work all those situations out for them, that you would just touch his body, um, that you would touch his mind, encourage him. And the same with her, Lord. I know she's worried, so I just pray that you would just encourage her. Uh, Lord, just let them both know that it's in your hands. Uh, Lord, we pray for Pat uh, House, that you would just uh, be with her in her situation, help to ease any anxiety that she's feeling. Lord, just touch her body and strengthen it. Uh, Lord, we ask for, for good news, good reports. Uh, Father, we ask, Lord, for the situation with the, these kids, that you would just, Lord, you know what they need. You know what they've been through. Uh, you know what's best for everyone in that situation. So I just pray, Lord, that you would work it out. Um, Lord, that you would just minister to them and uh, just encourage them with your Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, we pray over our community, our country. Um, Lord, over this uh, town, over our church that you would just uh, have your way. Lord, I pray over the church in general, Lord, worldwide. Uh, Father, we just, we seem to be moving backwards. Uh, and, and part of the biggest problem is because we've forgotten our first love, as uh, was said in the book of Revelation to one of the churches, Lord. And um, as I said in my devotion, it seems like we spend more time tearing each other down uh, than we we're more concerned with that than we are with spreading the gospel. So I just pray, Lord, for a refocus of our priorities, of where we should be, that we would 
uh, fall back into love with our first love, which is you, Lord, and we'd have that passion again that we would empty ourselves of ourselves. We'd recognize our true place, Lord, as servants and that we would um, be like Barnabas, Lord, and just uh, prefer one another, love each other, and work towards healing and restoration, not towards canceling. And Lord, we just thank you for this, and we ask this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we will see you next week. Take care. We noticed after we got off that Flora Bergman first wrote priest in the subject line, which <laughs> I didn't think I was wearing a collar today, but uh, no. <laughs> Turned out her phone was up, uh, acting up, but then she, she had put a message for something for us to pray about, but unfortunately we didn't see it until it was over. But Flora, we love you. I hope you're watching this. We love you. We love you. We love all the work you do here um, yes, at the school. Absolutely. You are great at what you do. And she's asked that we would pray for um, uh, the teachers at Mac. So we're just going to do another prayer each again, uh, supplementary for Flora and, well, for the teachers there yes, at Mac. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you. Father, I thank you for Flora. Thank you for her heart for you um, and for her heart for these kids. I get to see it in action every day. Lord, I thank you for all of the teachers that we have, the teacher's aides, Lord, all the staff, for Chris, Lord, for the ministry that we have here in the school. Uh, we're reaching out to kids, Lord, that might not otherwise have any other exposure to you. And we just thank you for that opportunity, and I just pray that you would be with all of the teachers, the aides, all of the employees. Just guide them, give them wisdom. Uh, Lord, each and every one of us is going to come into different circumstances and deal with different things on a daily basis. So I just pray, Lord, like as the book of James says, if we ask for wisdom and we believe it, that you'll give it to us. So I ask for that wisdom for them, for how they can deal with all of these situations. Lord, I, I just ask for wisdom for how they can get through to all of the kids, Lord, uh, not just in their educational journey as far as secular education, but also, Lord, into um, giving them a, um, helping to, to plant a seed, Lord, for faith in you, which is even more important. So I thank you for them, Lord. I just pray that you'd be with the teachers, be with the kids. Um, and we just thank you for this in Christ's name. Uh, Father, once again, I, I echo everything that uh, Pastor Jason has said. And I do uh, thank you so much for our Christian school, Lord. The, the privilege that we have uh, to come here and to teach children about, about you and about your, your son every single day. Lord, I just I pray that uh, you'll be with all of our preschool teachers, all of our elementary preachers teachers, if I can speak, all of our aides. Uh, pray for, for Sherry as well. Pray for Chris, our administrator. Um, Lord, we're so thankful for each one that, that uh, gives of their time and have, have answered the call uh, to teach and to be there for, for these kids. And Father, I just pray that you will bless them and help them to, to deal with each, each and every situation um, with grace and love and, and show, show them who you are. Lord, we love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, should we check to see if Flora left any other messages? I don't. I don't think <laughs> Just so. kidding, Flora. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>